Hi everyone. Hope you're well. Organizing some stuff. Let's see. Let's see what's going on in Discord. To watch movies, and I, I don't particularly find them interesting. So, unless it's something that like that I that I that I genuinely am interested in. But I, I mean, I'll watch like a you know a video my girlfriend or something you know wants to watch something. I'll, I'll you know I'll watch it. Uh, some guy's talking to himself. At least that's what it sounds like. Hmm. Maybe I should play some music, what do you guys think? How about, um, how about Radiohead? Oh, I had, there's this new, not new band, but a band I like called Oso Oso. They have a song called Reindeer Games. Let me play that for you guys.
right, so yeah, that, that song called uh, Reindeer Games by Oso Oso. I thought it was pretty good. Um, that could be a reindeer. <laughs> um, let me see here. Looking around for some things to read and study and whatnot. I'm surprised you heard of them, Hunter. <clears throat> Steve, etc. Um, do I believe in God? Uh, Oso, 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 Oso. I don't know why Kramer doesn't like crypto. That's up to Kramer, you know. Um, I'm going to be looking at some different PDFs, so I'm going to show you some of that in a second. Probably not going to be the most interactive stream you've ever seen, but I'll do my best, I guess. I guess, I guess. Mm, if you want, I could be a reindeer. No, 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 stay here. Characters.map. Should I open this? Open with notepad. That can cause a problem, can it? Characters.map. Where'd you come from? Um. Uh, <coughs> that can be a reindeer. Do you guys want to play some video games? I want to play uh, Civilization. Um, I have to read Sid Meier Meyer's book. Uh, somebody sent it to me in jail, but I didn't get a chance to... What the fuck is characters.map? Where does this file come from? What's a map file anyway? Dot map file. Hmm. I can just stay here on reindeer. I don't want to delete a file that I made. <laughs> Linker address map. Okay. I'm just gonna delete it. Fuck it. I think it might be a chemistry thing. Um, Fortnite. Data intensive apps, okay. Yeah, I have like a hundred books here that I have to read. Um, oh, there's a really good book that everybody, here's, here's one of them that I probably should read. I'll show you real quick. We can just stay here. Um, by Steve Levy. I heard of this guy. This guy. This guy. Oh, they're in both green and, uh, Black. Marvin Minsky, my fave. Rest in peace to a real one. Altair eighty eight hundred. So I was looking at different compilers for old, um, not compilers, I, guess, I mean different chipsets, some old um, 
old video game consoles. It's kind of fun uh, to look at. Let me find the right book I want to read. I was playing a little Rust. Uh, it's actually a correction. I was playing more than a little Rust. <laughs> I was playing too much Rust. Um, let's see. I have this Canvas app I'm working on. I've got um, a big app I'm working on. I should probably work on that. Um, I was listening to MIT Physics. That was fun. Um, sort of fun. Are you a reindeer? Um, let's see. Here's a JPEG of a monkey asleep. Mm, if you want, I need to stay here. Mm, da, 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 da. I could be your reindeer. Boodle, boodle, doo. I'm still sorting out some books on my computer here. I think I'm done. Radiohead, what do you guys think? Books called Proofs and Refutations. Preface this edition, Paolo Mancuso. 
Proofs and Reputations is one of the undeniable classics of the philosophy of mathematics. Is one of the undeniable classics of the philosophy of mathematics. Fifty years have passed since the publication of the articles that make up its central core, but the book has not lost neither its freshness nor its provocative vitality. It takes the form of a classroom dialogue in which a group of students and their teacher investigate the problems of whether there is a relation that holds between the number of vertices V and the number of edges E, and the number of faces F of regular polyhedra, i.e. the five platonic solids. At the outset of the dialogues, they have arrived at the formula V minus E plus F equals 2. The conjecture of the result may extend to any polyhedra on Euler's conjecture, Euler's conjecture. And this is the starting point of a riveting development that carries the reader through the rational, through the rational reconstruction as embodied in the class dialogue of the history of Euler's conjecture culminating in Poincaré's proof. The reconstruction, in strong contrast to a piece of axiomatic uh, mathematics, features contradictions, monsters, counterexamples, conjectures, concept stretchings, hidden lemmas proofs, and a wide range of informal moves meant to account for the rationality of the process leading to concept formation and conjectures, proofs, and mathematical practice. Yet Euler's conjecture is just a case study displaying Lakatos's highly original approach to the philosophy of mathematics. A starker contrast with the formalist foundational approach dominant up to the 1960s and embodying the philosophies of mathematics of neopositivist inspiration can scarcely be imagined, whereas the latter, inspired by Euclid's infallibilist dogmatic style, uh, thought of mathematical theories statically as axiomatic systems, Lakatos was after an account of informal mathematics as a fallible dynamic body of knowledge, rejecting the positivist distinction between context of discovery and context of justification, he claimed that mathematical practice and its history are not the domain of the rational, but rather display an objectivity and rationality that any philosophy of mathematics worth its name should account for. Uh, the tools for addressing the rationality of mathematical growth could not, however, be those of formal logic, whose deductivist style could only address issues of the static variety and thus and was thus unable to account for concept formation and rational dynamics driving the development of informal mathematics. Rather, Lakatos found inspiration in Polya's work on mathematic, mathematical heuristics, Hegel's dialectic, and Popperian conjuncture and refutation. This led to Lakatos's dialectical methodology, a heuristic style that reveals the struggle and the adventure of mathematical creation. There will always be disagreements as to whether or not, or whether, to, whether or to what extent Lakatos's case studies are paradigmatic and can be extended to mathematics as a whole. Scholars will continue to disagree about the suitability of the dialectical framework for accounting for mathematical growth and the role of mathematical logic in the history and philosophy of mathematics, but the characteristic trait of the classic is its rich and varied legacy. Proofs and reputation stands up to the test for it continues to be a source of inspiration to many historians, mathematics, mathematicians, and philosophers who aspire to develop a philosophy of mathematics that does justice to the static and dynamic complexity of mathematical practice. Okay, so that was a lot to unpack. Um, there's probably two things that some people may not be familiar with, so I'm going to start with positivism, which is sort of a school of philosophy. What does uh, Google say here? It's a philosophical system that holds that every rationally justifiable assertion can be scientifically verified or is capable of logical or mathematical proof and that therefore rejects metaphysics and theism. Okay, so, you know, basically as we talk about kind of uh, epistemology and how do we handle knowledge, you know, this guy's name, Popper, uh, will come up a lot, as will others, and um, this is sort of a meta, sort of, um, I was going to say, this is the order of okay, is it? I guess it is. I haven't listened to it in a while. Anyway, uh, you know, this may not be interesting to people who um, don't give a crap about this stuff. I just want to do math. Um, but there is this sort of uh, meta-mathematics and meta-philosophical um, understanding of learning that, that does come to play and how do we organize knowledge. Then there's Lakatos, who I, I have no idea who this guy was. Um, Hungarian philosopher, philosophy of science person. Um, I don't know much about the philosophy of science. It is something I'm interested in. So Imre Lakatos, Hungarian board philosopher of mathematics and science, who rose to prominence, notable for his anti-formalist philosophy. Um, so not just the philosophy of Hilbert, who we've, we've talked about Hilbert on this podcast a bunch of times. It's not a podcast, but whatever, on this live stream. And his followers, but also comprises logicism and intuitionism. Um, okay, so, you know, again, these are, these are people who philosophize about science and, and you know, I've gotten more and more interested in this stuff over time. I enjoyed watching Lex Friedman interview um, 
my hero Nick Bostrom, uh, for example, uh, recently, and he's a philosopher of science in a lot of ways. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> you guys don't talk about Caroline. That's my um, girlfriend, right? Caroline Ellison. Don't make fun of her. Don't, uh, don't you dare. Do uh, you want an example of positivism? Um, hmm. Examples. Let's see. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it depends on, on, you could, positivism is like postmodernism, it's like a big uh, concept. Um, Comte was the guy. You have to read more about this stuff. Interesting, but again, we can uh, so we look at other things. All right, editor's preface: Our great friend and teacher Imre Lakatos died unexpectedly. Uh, oh, this is by Lak ah, okay. This is by Lakatos. That makes more sense. So he wrote this, uh, and edited by John Worrell and Ellie Zahar. We can skip the editor's preface for now. Let's read the author's introduction. It frequently happens that in the history of thought that when a powerful new method emerges, the study of those problems which can be dealt with by the new method advances rapidly and attracts the limelight while the rest tend to be ignored or even forgotten. It's study despised. This situation seems to have risen in our century in the philosophy of mathematics as a result of the dynamic development of metamathematics. The subject matter of metamathematics is an abstraction of mathematics in which mathematical theories are replaced by formal systems, proofs by certain sequences of well-formed formula, uh, definitions by abbreviatory devices, which are theoretically dispensable but typographically convenient. Uh, this is, I guess, Alonzo Church referring to Pino's work, uh, and certainly Russell Whitehead, uh, who did Principia Mathematica. Um, and there's a reference to even Pascal. Uh, all right. This abstraction was devised by Hilbert to provide a powerful technique for approaching some of the problems of the methodology of mathematics. At the same time, there are problems which fall outside of the range of mathematical abstractions. Among these are the problems relating to informal mathematics and to its growth, and all problems relating to the situational logic of mathematical problem solving. I shall refer to the school of mathematical philosophy, which tends to identify mathematics with its formal axiomatic abstraction and the philosophy of mathematics with metamathematics as the formalist school. One of the clear statements of the formalist position is to be found in Carnap. Carnap demands that A, philosophy is to be replaced by the logic of science. Okay. B, the logic of science is nothing more than the logical syntax of the language of science. And C, metamathematics is the syntax of math mathematical language. Or philosophy of mathematics is to be replaced by mathematics. Formalism disconnects the history of mathematics from the philosophy of mathematics, since according to the formalist concept of mathematics, there is no history of mathematics proper. Any formalist would basically agree with Russell's, Bertrand Russell's, uh, romantically put but seriously meant remark, according to which the Boole's Laws of Thought was the first book ever written on mathematics. So this is Boole of Boolean fame. George Boole, who I think was a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a what was the word that you could use a not a pastor or priest but he was a like a one religious figure I don't know exactly uh, maybe reverend I don't know uh, formalism denies the status of mathematics to most of what has been commonly understood to be mathematics and can say nothing about its growth none of the creative periods and hardly any of the critical periods of mathematical theories would be admitted into the formalist heaven where mathematical theories dwell like the seraphim, purged of all the impurities of earthly uncertainty. Formalists, though, usually leave open a small back door for fallen angels. If it turns out that some mixtures of mathematics and something else, we, that for some mixtures of mathematics and something else, we can find formal systems which include them in a certain sense, then they too may be admitted. This is Curry. Uh, a lot of uh, OGs in the uh, um, math, computer science world we were talking about 
Um, on those terms, Newton had to wait uh, four centuries until Pino, Russell, and Quine, Quine is a really cool name in this world, uh, helped him into heaven by formulating the calculus. That's, um, of course, he's being sort of sarcastic here. Dirac is more fortunate. Schwartz saved his soul during his lifetime. Perhaps we should mention here the paradoxical plight of the mathematician. By formalist or even by deductivist standards, he is not an honest mathematician. Dewey Donnet talks about the absolute necessity imposed on any mathematician who cares for intellectual integrity to present his reasonings in axiomatic form. Under the present dominance of formalism, one is tempted to paraphrase Kant. Uh, the history of mathematics lacking the guidance of philosophy has become blind. While the philosophy of mathematics, turning its back on the most intriguing phenomena in the history of mathematics, has become empty. Okay, let's see. Russell, uh, mathematics and the metaphysicians. Russell says of the essay, its tone is partly explained by the fact that Edward begged me to make the article as romantic as possible. Okay, Godelian sentences are meaningless, according to Turquette. Turquette argues against copy. Who claims that since they are a, a priori truths but not analytic, they refute the analytical theory of a priori? And notices that the peculiar status of Gödelian sentences from this point of view is that the theorems are theorems of informal mathematics, and that they, and that in fact they are discussing the test of in a particular case. Okay. All right. Formalism is a bulwark of logical positivist philosophy. According to logical positivism, a statement is meaningful only if it is either tautological or empirical. Since informal mathematics is neither tautological nor empirical, it must be meaningless, sheer nonsense. Yeah, so again, this, this stuff is about like how do we think about knowledge and you know what's its place in philosophy and logic. Uh, and these are tricky questions, and you might find that people who ask these questions and try to answer them are, are a little crazy, and I think that's probably true. The dogmas of logical positivism have been detrimental to the history and philosophy of mathematics. The purpose of these essays is to approach some problems of the methodology of mathematics. I use the word methodology in a sense akin to Polya and Bernays heuristic and Popper's logic of discovery or situational logic. The recent expropriation of the term methodology of mathematics to serve as a synonym for metamathematics has undoubtedly a formalist touch. It indicates that in formalist philosophy of mathematics, there is no proper place for methodology qua logic of discovery. Okay, one can illustrate by this Tarski. Tarski was definitely a very important mathematician. In the first paper, Tarski used the term deductive sciences explicitly as a shorthand for formalized deductive sciences. He says formalized deductive disciplines from the field of research in mathematics, roughly in the same sense in which spatial entities form the field of research in geometry. The sensible formulation is given, this sensible formulation is given intriguing imperialist twist in the second paper. The deductive disciplines constitute the subject matter of the methodology of the deductive sciences in much the same sense that spatial entities constitute the subject matter of geometry and animals that of zoology. None, naturally, not all deductive disciplines are presented in a form suitable for the objects of scientific investigation. There's those, for example, are not. Okay. You gotta love these little notes that are longer than the text. Okay, according to formalists, mathematics is identical with formalized mathematics. Okay, but what can one discover in a formalized theory? Two sorts of things. First, one can discover the solution to problems which a suitably programmed Turing machine could solve in a finite time, such as is a certain alleged proof a proof or not? Okay, no mathematician is interested in following out the dreary mechanical method prescribed by such decision procedures. Speak for yourself. Secondly, one can discover the solution to problems, such as, is a certain formula in a non-decidable theory a theorem or not, where one can be guided only by the method of unregimented insight and good fortune. Now this bleak alternative, <laughs> my dad's sending me a message, I gotta see what that is. Now this bleak alternative between the rationalism of a machine and the irrationalism of blind guessing does not hold for live mathematics. An investigation of informal mathematics will yield a rich situational logic for working mathematicians, a situational logic which is neither mechanical nor irrational, but which cannot be recognized and still less stimulated by the formalist philosophy. The history of mathematics and the logic of mathematical discovery 
In other words, the phylogenesis and the ontogenesis of mathematical thought cannot be developed without the criticism and ultimate rejection of formalism. But formalist philosophy in mathematics has very deep roots. It is the latest link in a long chain of dogmatist philosophies in mathematics. For more than 2,000 years, there has been an argument between dogmas, dogmatists and skeptics. Um, boy, oh boy, this is uh, deep philosophy. Um, I'm just reading note seven and note eight. <laughs> Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Um, that's the uh, when I was in high school, I took this college class at New School University, um, which is here in New York. Um, it's a weird little school. It's called the New School. Maybe that's the, all right, New School University, but it's the New School. Um, the university that imagine, reimagines the future. I took this uh, class called Evolution, and I studied evolution and wrote a, a very long paper on Lynn Margulis and her work on mitochondria, but and evolutionary biology, I guess. But the uh, ever since uh, both in high school, early high school and late high school, I would just repeat this phrase over and over again: ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny, um, and the uh, the idea is. Um, in case you guys don't know what that is, it's definitely a catchphrase. Uh, but if uh, you can see what what's meant here by if you look at the um, basically the way uh, animals form throughout development, you can see that there's a phylogenetic kind of similarity between embryos, right? And there's like, you start to get this diversification as you get closer to late stage, but in the middle of the stage, the fetal stage, you see a lot of similarity across species. All right, can't hear any of this music by the way. Is it too loud, too little? It's not loud enough. So I guess they're saying that um, that they, they want to extend ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny to mental development and mathematical mental development, which is wild. Zoologists maintain that the embryonic development of an animal recapitulates in brief the whole history of its ancestors through geological time. It seems it is the same in the development of minds. For this reason, the history of science should be our first guide. So I really like that style of uh, thinking, and that's why I spend a lot of time on history uh, and basics of fields. Anyway, the dogmatists hold that by the power of our human intellect and or senses, we can attain truth and know that we have attained it. The skeptics, on the other hand, either hold that we cannot attain truth at all unless with the help of mystical experience, ah, or that we cannot know if we can attain it, or that we have attained it. In this great debate, in which arguments are time and again brought up to date, mathematics has been the proud fortress of dogmatism. Uh, I think that's the reason I like math, at least. Whenever the mathematical dogmatist, uh, dogmatism of the day got into a crisis, new version once again provided genuine rigor and ultimate foundations, thereby restoring the image of authoritative, infallible, and irrefutable mathematics, the only science that it has pleased God hitherto to bestow on mankind, Hobbes. Most skeptics uh, design themselves, resign themselves to the impregnability of this stronghold of dogmatist epistemology. A challenge is now overdue. Uh-oh. 
The core of this case study will challenge mathematical formalism, but will not challenge directly the ultimate positions of mathematical dogmatism. Its modest aim is to elaborate the point that informal quasi-empirical mathematics does not grow through monotonous increase of the number of indubitably established theorems, but through the incessant improvement of guesses by speculation and criticism that I can live with by the logic of proofs and refutations. Since, however, metamathematics is a paradigm of informal quasi-empirical mathematics just now in rapid growth, the essay, uh, by implication, will also challenge modern uh, mathematical dogmatism. The uh, student of recent history of metamathematics will recognize the patterns described here in, in his own field. The dialogue from form should reflect the dialectic of the story. It is meant to contain a sort of rationally reconstructed or distilled history. The, the real history will chime in in the footnotes, most of which are taken, therefore, as an organic part of the essay. Okay, so um, there's a couple of guys I'd point out. Um, so the first is Jeffrey uh, 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 Chaitin. Gregory Chaitin, there we go. <laughs> and he's written a lot of interesting books. Um, this would be really interesting, actually. Thank you very much for joining us. We have um, it's a pleasure. Um, we have lots of people here who are part of our summer school and our summer camp. So you can consider that at least two generations of um, of interested folk. And I, and I thought what maybe we could try to do. I'm actually not a big Chaitin fan. I'm a big Wolfram fan, but Chaitin is um, talk a bit about your life, times, science, math. And maybe uh, head for questions about metamathematics and metabiology, and what is mathematics, what is biology, and so on. But maybe, maybe we could start off. Um, you know what? The second guy is Cliff Pickover, who's written a lot of really interesting books. Um, kind of a polymath uh, genius. This is a Mandelbrot set. Wow, doesn't it look like um, a tree? Sort of like a tree. Looks like a, something that's alive, right? I used to play with this kind of stuff all the time. many people here will have heard of you for is algorithmic information theory. And um, maybe, um, maybe... Chaitin has this silly omega number that he quote-unquote invented in algebraic information theory. Many people you know. will be interested in hearing kind of the, uh, the back story. How, how did algorithmic information theory come to happen? Uh -huh. Let me try to remember. Um, well, I was interested in uh, Gadolin completeness. But this uh, is let, let, let's take it back historically. You were you were in high school in New York City, as I as I uh, as I. Yeah, this is before this is before high school. I'm uh, an 11 year old. It's 1958. Nay. All right, chapter one: a problem and a conjecture. The dialogue takes place in an imaginary classroom. The class gets interested in a problem. Is there a relation between the number of vertices V, the number of edges E, and the number of faces F of polyhedra, particularly of regular polyhedra, analogous to the trivial relation between the number of vertices and edges of polygons, namely that there are as many edges as vertices V equals E? Do you guys know what we're talking about here? The latter relation enables us to classify polygons according to the number of edges of vertices, triangles, quadrangles, pentagons, etc. An analogous relation would help to classify polyhedra. After much trial and error, they noticed that for all regular polyhedra, V minus E plus F equals two. This was first noticed by Euler in 1758. His original problem was the classification of polyhedra, the difficulty of which was pointed out in the editorial summary. While in plane geometry, polygons could be classified very easily according to the number of sides, which is of course always equal to the number of their angles, in stereometry, the classification of polyhedra represents a much more difficult problem since the number of faces alone is insufficient for this purpose. The key to Euler's result was just the invention of the concepts of vertex and edge. 
It was he who first pointed out that besides the number of faces, the number of points and lines on the surface of the polyhedron determines its topological character. This is why Euler's thought to be the inventor of graph theory or network theory or topo even topology. It is interesting that on the other, on the one hand, he was eager to stress the novelty of his conceptual framework and that he had to invent the term edge instead of the old side since lattice or side in Latin was a polygonal concept uh, while he wanted a polyhedral one. On the other hand, he still retained the term angulus solidus, solid angle for his point-like vertices. It has been generally been recognized and accepted that the priority of the result goes to Descartes. The ground for this claim is a manuscript of Descartes in 1639, copied by Leibniz in Paris from the original in 1675, and rediscovered and published by Faucher de Carriel in 1860. The priority should not be granted to Descartes without a monarch qualification. It's true that Descartes states that the number of plane angles equals two uh, box plus two A minus four, where box he means uh, the number of faces and that by A the number of solid angles. It is also true that he states that there are twice as many plane angles as edges. The conjunction of these two statements, of course, yields the Euler formula. But Descartes did not see the point of doing so, since he still thought in terms of angles and faces, plain and solid, and did not make a conscious revolutionary change to the concept of zero-dimensional vertices, one-dimensional edges, and two-dimensional faces as a necessary and sufficient basis for the full topological characterization of polyhedra. All right, so the class guesses V minus E plus F equals two. Somebody guesses that this may apply for any polyhedron whatsoever. Others try to falsify this conjecture, try to test it in many different ways, it holds good. The results corroborate the conjecture and suggest that it could be proved. It is at this point, after the stages, problem and conjecture, in which that we enter the classroom. The teacher is just going to offer a proof. A proof. The teacher says, In our last lesson, we arrived at a conjecture concerning polyhedra, namely, that for all polyhedra, V minus E plus F equals 2, where V is the number of vertices, E is the number of edges, and F the number of faces. We tested it by various methods, but we haven't yet proved it. Has anybody found a proof? Pupil Sigma. Oh, this guy is Sigma. He's really good. I, for one, have to admit that I have not yet been able to devise a strict proof for this theorem. As, however, the truth of it has been established in so many cases, there can be no doubt that it holds good for any solid. Thus, the proposition seems to be satisfactorily demonstrated. But if you have a proof, please do present it. The teacher says, in fact, I have one. It consists of the following thought experiment. Step one, let us imagine a polyhedron to be hollow with a surface made of thin rubber. Okay, hollow with a surface made of thin rubber. Let's think of a cube, I suppose. If we cut out one of the faces, okay, we can stretch the remaining surface flat on the back blackboard without tearing it. I suppose so, yeah, okay. The faces and edges will be deformed and the edges may become curved, but V and E will not alter. So that if and only if v minus e plus f equals 2 for the original polyhedron, v minus e plus f equals 1 for this flat network. Remember that we have removed one face. All right, can you guys see this in your head? We took out um, from this cube, we took out maybe the top, and we stretched it like that. That makes sense? And we flattened it stretched it and flattened it across a two-dimensional surface. So we turn from 3D to 2D. Figure 1 shows the flat network for the case of a cube. Step 2, now we triangulate our map. It does indeed look like a geographical map. We draw possibly curvilinear diagonals in those possibly curvilinear polygons which are not already possibly cur curvilinear triangles. By drawing each diagonal we increase both E and F by 1 so that the total V minus E plus F will not be altered. Let's take a look.
from the triangular network, we now remove the triangles one by one. To remove a triangle, we either remove an edge, upon which a face and one edge disappear, or remove two edges and a vertex, upon which one face, two edges, and one vertex disappear. Thus, if v minus e plus f equals 1 becomes before a triangle is removed, it remains so after the triangle is removed. At the end of this procedure, we get a single triangle. For this, v minus e plus f holds true. Thus, we have proved our conjecture. You should now call it a theorem. There's nothing conjectural about it anymore. That's what pupil delta says. Pupil alpha says, I wonder, I see that this experiment can be performed for a cube or a tetrahedron, but how am I supposed to know that it can be performed for any polyhedron? For instance, this is induction, of course. For instance, are you sure, sir, that any polyhedron, after having a face removed, can be stretched flat on the blackboard? I'm dubious about your first step. Pupil beta, this is somebody maybe we don't like. Are you sure that in triangulating the map, one will always get a new face for any new edge. I'm dubious about your second step. Pupil gamma says, are you sure that there are only two alternatives? The disappearance of one edge or else of two edges and a vertex when one drops the triangles one by one. Are you sure, even sure that one is left with a single triangle at the end of this process? I'm dubious about your third step. So we got questions about step one, two, and three. Teacher says, of course I'm not sure. Alpha says, but then we're worse off than before. Instead of one conjecture, we now have at least three. And you call this a proof? I admit that the traditional proof for this thought experiment may rightly be considered a bit misleading. I do not think that it establishes the truth of the conjecture. What does it do then? What do you think the mathematical proof proves? This is a subtle question, which I'll try to answer later. Till then, I propose to retain the time-honored technical term proof for a thought experiment, or quasi-experiment, which suggests a decomposition of the original conjecture into subconjectures or lemmas, thus embedding it into a possibly quite distant body of knowledge. Our proof, for instance, has embedded the original conjecture about crystals, or say solids, in the theory of rubber sheets. Descartes or Euler, the fathers of the original conjecture, certainly did not even dream of this. Okay, Euler tested the conjecture quite thoroughly for consequences. He checked it for prisms, pyramids, and so on. He could have added that the proposition that there are only five regular bodies is also a consequence of the conjecture. Hmm. Another suspected consequence is hitherto corroborated is the hitherto corroborated proposition that four colors are sufficient to color a map. Uh, that's the famous four color theorem. The phase of conjecturing and testing in the case of v minus f, v minus e plus f equals two, is discussed in Polia, Volume One. Uh, I think Polia, Polia wrote a book called How to Prove It. Um, pretty sure. Which is another. Uh, nope, that was uh, somebody else. Velleman. Polia wrote a book with a somewhat similar name, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway. Um, Polia stopped here, as it does not deal with the phase of proving, though of course he pointed out the need for a heuristic pro uh, of problems to prove. Our discussion starts where Polia stopped. This proof idea stems from Cauchy. This is a famous proof, actually. Delta's view that this proof has established the theorem beyond doubt was shared by many mathematicians in the 19th century. To quote a characteristic passage, after Cauchy's proof, it became absolutely indubitable that the elegant relation V plus F equals E plus two applies to all sorts of polyhedra, just as Euler stated in 1752. In 1811, all indecision should have disappeared. This class is a rather advanced one. To Cauchy, Poinsot, and many other excellent mathematicians of the 19th century, these questions did not occur. All right, so yeah, this is a fun uh, little experiment. Again, this may, we may have gone too quickly here, uh, but we're not gonna read this whole book. It would take a couple of live streams to do so. But this is definitely uh, an interesting book that goes into this problem quite, quite deep, quite vivid detail. I've heard a lot about this book, and I'd like to read it completely, and never got a chance to. It's pretty short. Uh, nice bibliography there. Uh, 150 pages of meat. Oh, maybe even less. Maybe like 130 pages. Cool. 
All right, let's see here. Uh, I have haven't played. Have I ever played Civilization VI? When did that come out? Let's take a look. It's in my Steam, so I must have played it at some point. I can be your reindeer. -da 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 -da. Initial release date, 2016. Yeah, I definitely played it. Um, I don't know. Direct X 12 sounds better than 11. What do you think? Milo made me. Ooh, that's cool. I'm friends with Milo. I like Milo. If Milo made me, then that works. I think Civilization is the the best game ever. I don't know what you guys think. I used to play Civilization 2 all day, every day. I haven't played Red Dead um, Redemption yet. I can be a reindeer. This game is, uh, I love this game. <laughs> what should I study first? Uh, maybe mining or animal husbandry. Sounds like animal husbandry is maybe best. All right, let's go. Let's go. Good. All right, we're good. We chose it, right? We're good? I think we're good. Alright. Can I build a city here? Alright. City's called Washington. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, the Rough Riders. This music was maybe a little loud. Save or hit confirm. There we go. I confirmed it. All right. Um, we're gonna build a monument. Is that a good idea? Do we build a scout? A scout sounds better. A monument doesn't sound so bad though. Okay. Next turn. This is a turn-based game. Okay. Don't want to get too far away. What is that thing? Craps. Oh, sweet. Good old um, crabs from Maine or Boston. Where are the best crabs from anyway? I don't know. It's a body of water to my north. Uh, 
Holy shit, this chat is so brain dead. Open up the cheat engine and do some memory injection. I think I'll pass on that. Okay, the east coast of my little country. Ooh, there's a barbarian there. Reconnaissance units like scouts are unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is my warrior unit. Oh, look at that. Our city-state neighbors have made a request of us. If... Okay, this is a scout. So the scout... Uh, I kind of want it to just wander around. Um... Ah, uh, there we go. Automate exploration. Cool. Uh, produce something now. Let me produce, uh, I guess that monument. Um, tribal village discover. They want us to construct a campus, okay. I'll do my best. Whoa! Violence here. Okay. So these are warriors from Vilnius. Or Vilnius. Microsoft Excel. I can zoom in a little. Um, well, I can't fight these guys. They are friends of mine. Ooh. Okay. These are like little bonuses. I, think. I am fond of pigs. Dogs look up to us. Cats look down on us. Pigs treat us as equals. Winston Churchill. Um, I don't know if cats look down on us, do they? Trashy doesn't look down on us. I just got a new video of Trashy. She seems very happy. She doesn't seem too fat either. Sometimes I look at pictures of Trashy and I think she's fat. And sometimes um, she seems normal size. And she does seem normal size. policies in our government can be of great benefit. Our people- It is not wisdom, but authority that makes a law. Yeah. Isn't that true? Alright, let's see here. What is this? Do I drag and drop? A policy? Okay. Oh, here they are. Plus five unit combat strength when fighting barbarians. Double experience for recon units. Plus faith and gold in the capital. For plus one production. That sounds good. And unit combat when fighting barbarians, okay. We got a policy agenda. I feel like Hillary Clinton. And now I have to choose a civic, okay. Craftsmanship or foreign trade? Mm, probably craftsmanship. Knowledge of sailing has considerably been boosted. Sweet. Oh no! Mysticism has been boosted. Alright, so these guys could kill us pretty easily, so I think we gotta back out. Still probably gonna die. Shit. See, I shouldn't get too far away from Washington, should I? In case I get attacked. Okay. Looks like they're not gonna kill us, which is nice. We need to go up there at some point. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> lure your enemy into the Washington Capitol? What is that? The, um, insurrection? Do you guys notice Trump is back? I, uh, my Twitter is not back, unfortunately. I'm too dangerous. My thoughts are, you know, really worrisome and scary. I might teach you about proofs and refutations. Meta mathematics, really dangerous stuff actually. If you think about it. When you find yourself in a hole, quit digging. Civ music? It certainly seems like it. Not Radiohead. No, it is.
fitter, happier, more productive. Zinga, and it's great to I greet you as a friend. I can see you're blessed by God, and you're here to share enlightenment. It's an honor to meet you. Before we continue, come worship with me at our nearest city. Then we can enjoy a meal of chicken moambe. Hmm. Okay. We would love to sample your hospitality. Oh, what's up, Mom? All right, well, I guess we, we met, and that went well. Is this Nigeria? So we will be going to war at some point. Don't tell him. The Empire of Congo, not Nigeria. All right, this is a slinger. I need more housing. Boston will need more housing. Okay. Choose production. This is uh, for... Boston or Washington? Washington. All right, settler. Should I do a settler? Maybe a warrior. Barbarians approach. She. We have recently 
gained advanced knowledge in city planning. Creating districts in our cities can be much more powerful and lucrative than simple improvements like farms and mines. Bronze is the mirror of the form. Wine of the mind. Okay. Archery is probably pretty good. No, writing. Let me get writing. Alright, let's see here. This is a warrior. Can I do anything to the, the seed thing? I don't think so, right? Um, uh, seller? No, grand. Organisms don't think of CO2 as a poison. Plants and organisms that make shells, coral, think of it as a building block. Wow, we discovered the Great Barrier Reef. Where is it? Here. Streaming from jail. This is uh, this is my office um, room. My bedroom is um, over there, and my um, let's see, kitchen and living room is over there. I take you on a tour, but the wire, the wire wouldn't. Uh, This is what it's called an apartment. I am, am I him? Yes. I'm Himothy. JPEX out? What? Writing is easy. All I have to do is cross out the wrong words. Look back over the past with its changing empires that rose and fell. And you can foresee the future too. Oh shit, I have to order some food. It's so late as well. My man's got out in May. Trashy, hanging out. Wagging her tail. I'm gonna see Trashy for Thanksgiving. We're gonna give her some turkey. Yes, we will. Miss you, Trashy. Love you. loud in general. Maybe it's just my music is. Did 
Did you guys see the hit piece on Dave Portnoy? Bitcoin's hanging out. So, oh, shit, 16,000. Fuck. Bitcoin's getting killed. We were under 16,000 briefly. hour. Isn't he the pizza guy? No, he, uh, well, he, he does the pizza thing too, but he started Barstool Sports. I'm getting texts from my friends who are, like, too drunk over the last few days, so they, like, have all kinds of issues from being too drunk. Like, falling down or whatever. Really makes me want to quit drinking. And I have not drank in several weeks, and I don't miss it. There's so many funny cat memes on. Instagram. I'm looking through those instead of ordering food. Alright, let's see what food might be available. Send an envoy. Shit. The fuck? Attacking my city. All oh, you bastards. More barbarians. God damn. These fucking Mongolians. Um, I think SPF might get life. Should I get a burger? What do you guys think? Lettuce, tomato, pickles.
thirteen dollars for a burger. Man, these, this inflation's out of control. Delivery fee two forty nine. Tax a dollar forty five. Tip. Jesus. One burger twenty one dollars. Just times have changed. What kind of world do I live in? Jersey City. Total War. No, I've never heard of it. What is it? No, I don't think I've read Strategic Dividend Investor. Sorry. A Burger Royale. Royale with cheese.
that's a little of the Kanye West uh, interview with uh, Lex Friedman. Cyberpunk? Uh, maybe. I don't think uh, SBF can really get out of the trouble he's in. Ooh, I finally have a boat. A naval unit, maybe more accurately. It's going to be a long time before... Before the FTX people are arrested. It'll, it'll, it'll happen relatively soon, but justice isn't immediate like that. It just doesn't work that way.
like technical analysis. Civilization used to have to assign citizens specifically. I don't think you have to do that anymore. Oh, it looks like you, you kind of do. I don't know. You guys know this one? totally unnecessary. Ridiculous that you would take a Parkinson's drug thinking maybe, I know Siligiline, there are people that think it's some cognitive booster. Obviously, there was no cognitive boosting going on at FTX. Fucking morons. I think Sam Bankman is, is an intellectual fraud. I don't think this is a guy that was very smart at all. Not saying... Obviously, with retrospect, in retrospect, but he said things like he doesn't read books. If you looked at his League of Legends skills, they're pretty abysmal. I deserve prison time. Oh man, that's mean. Why? What I do? Let me get to 1900. Okay. Oh, I don't like this variation actually. Taking this, but you're, I think you're supposed to always sort of take on C3 in the French winner. Oh. Kind of a weird. Pawn's undefended now. This is a pretty good outpost on d5. Let me see if I can move my, okay, well, that might be in for the outpost. Um, okay, do I want the bad?
Um, can I take on... You can just take on F2, right? You like that? Who likes that? Does this not work though? Okay. Complex. It doesn't work. Um, hmm. Interesting. Okay. Did I fuck up? Let's see. Better not tell me it's just a game. It's not just a game. Okay, that I think was a little bit of a mistake. I could be wrong though. takes. I was gonna try to pin his knight, but now I see the fucking F7. <sighs> okay. Um... Just okay, yeah, he does have to get rid of that. Fuck. Uh, SPF was crazy. I mean, I think he probably thought he could trade his way out of the problem or just kind of... Yeah, why didn't I expect that? Alright, probably time to give up. Okay, you got some balls, kid. This is an interesting mate right here. Lost my eighteen hundred, now I'm seventeen eighty seven. I think.
think my food's here. time for recreation are sooner or later to find time for illness. I think it's here. Oh shit. Flinot Tigneki, tell your Shiwani and also Timawiki. Hunter Biden's laptop. NYU economics, good degree. All right, we got a burger of some kind. This game is a little boring. Kind of lame. You guys want to see the burger? I don't know. Does this look like twenty dollars to you? Can't believe it. I'm so angry. It raised the prices.
Um, Richard Hart? Don't reinvent the wheel. Seems like just a blowhard, you know? Just talks about himself nonstop. Hair and my burger. Ew. I'm just gonna hope that that was mine. Exactly, Lars Larson. You're exactly right. I can't read. Pretty sure I was reading an interesting book earlier, reading it all out to you. I think serial, serial murderer is right. <laughs> Can't do too many pull-ups. Oh, my hair is something else. Need a professional hair fit. Yeah, I don't doubt Richard knows a lot about crypto, probably more than me. some rating inflation for sure. CSF is like 1350, so. Odds the market have bottomed? Eh, probably. It's very hard to tell. Years of my life playing this game too, don't worry. Oh man. The Lord made us all out of iron. Then he turns up the heat to forge some of us into steel. I like that. Sweet. Sweet. 
Choose religion. We got Buddhism, Catholicism, Confucianism, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, Eastern Orthodoxy, Protestantism, Shinto, Sikhism, Taoism, Zoroastrianism, my own custom religion, Kanye West. In your honor, I'm picking Judaism. Um, what are my uh, religious beliefs? <laughs> they control Hollywood. <laughs> control of Hollywood. Plus one. <laughs> Plus one entertainment. Poor Kanye, man. The guy is so dumb. He's so talented, but so stupid. VA is stating facts. Jews do not control Hollywood in some conspiratorial way. Yeah, I think Kanye is um, a little crazy. I mean, I could understand kind of what he's trying to say. I think that he's just not saying it in an effective way. Like, I don't know. I think he just sort of tries to be flamboyant for no, no reason. What? Get the fuck out of here. Talk to me like that again. Belligerent asshole. You're like Vladimir Putin. I'll show you who's boss. I did see that trainer thing. That was really weird. Um, that was really disturbing that somebody could talk to you like that. What a fucking weirdo. I'm not that surprised that there are people like that in Hollywood that take fame way too seriously. Oh, I am. I, I'd like to get the new Jordans. Crypto, um, oh. Hard to tell what's gonna happen. This could be the beginning of the end. And it could also be something that blows over. It's hard to know.
to new and fragile technology, you know? Oh shit, Friday, it's on. It's lit. I've talked a lot about FTX. Spent in the saddle. Um, FTX, I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, the guy lied, cheated, stole. I mean, the temptation when you got billions of dollars of customer deposits. Oh, we could just take those and grow it and keep the difference, and that's what a bank does. Well, that's what JP Morgan does. Why can't I do that? That's what Warren Buffett does, right? And there's something to be said for that. It's just a matter of... What do they say? That uh, the victor writes history? You can't fuck it up. If you're gonna... If you're gonna do it, then do it and succeed. Don't, you know, don't fuck it up. And you fucked it up. Success absolves most sins, not all. Oh, I can't wait to meet her. Yeah, JW, what happens? Did you sing my shit? Not quiet. Those who quarrels interpose must often wipe a bloody nose. <laughs> Sukma. It's over for Zaka. Why is this guy dissing me now too? There's a lot of antagonism here. Why don't you let me live? How about that? Allowed to trade stocks? When are you not allowed to trade stocks? Has that ever happened? Okay, great scientist. Omar Khayyam. Our dedication to the ways of science has attracted. Nice, nice. Do you guys know who Omar Khayyam is? He's like one of the first mathematicians. Was also a poet. Right, so 
what can this guy do? Just to go here, it looks like. And what can I do here? Toggle the Eureka moment. Did I have any trades in jail? No. Uh, no, no, no. If it does not bring you happiness, will at least help you be miserable with comfort. Good night. Thanks for coming. Wolf of Main Street. Hiccups. <laughs> What happened in New York? Free move, sure, of course. Pre-moving since ICC days. Yeah, I agree. Fifteen minutes is the best time control.
do energy. League of Legends real quick? I don't know anything about copper, I'm sorry. That's what we was asking you. New York, finally. New York is a Midwestern city in this game. I gotta build NYU first. You gotta add me, uh, Hunter. but thank you. Invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in the attack. Two. Let's go find a match. Let's go. Oh, no, no. I wanted to do ranked. Ranked, ranked, ranked. Big rolls. What up? trade. Oh, I don't know. 
investor, not a trader. Jim was a trader. Let's go, Shkreli, you gotta win. Win by any means necessary. Failure is not an option. Let's fucking go. Celebrity boxing. I first have to be a celebrity. No, VC is fine. You're mid after all. Elizabeth Holmes. She'll be back in eight years, poor lady. Biker's back. I don't think Elizabeth's gonna be single. She's got two kids. They're 40 or Nerlukans. The body needs uh, a number of ways to control inflammation and immunity. That's uh, just part of uh, part of the immune system. Um, SBF will definitely go to prison. I don't know if he gets life. Maybe 30 years. 25, 30, maybe life. Depends going to be on the judge he draws. If he draws a, a bad judge, he could get life. If he draws a good judge, maybe 20, 25 years. He's not going to get pardoned. Um, it's very hard to get pardoned. It takes a long time to get pardoned, trust me. Mark Rich had every political favor, way more than Sam Bankman. It took him a while. He's no Mark Rich. Michael Milken took 30, 40 years to get pardoned. SPF is Sam Bankman free. I don't consider him to be smart at all. I consider him to be an idiot. I don't think Elizabeth Holmes will appeal successfully, unfortunately. Appeals are very hard to make it work. 
Uh, it takes a long time for people to get indicted. It took five years for me. Um, but so it's really not, you know, it's been, it's been a month, right? I think Lars, you're correct. Um, it's hard to know how to trade well after a very short period of time. Some people can do it, but very few. Yeah, made off level shit, I, I would agree with that. Real crook. Well, I think he probably had a lot of confidence in his abilities, but there's a difference between confidence and then lying, you know. He, he fucked up some trades, and then I didn't want to admit um, that he was failing because of the big, uh, you know, um, all of the uh, clout he was getting. It would have been very embarrassing to have to retreat. Yeah, I'm gonna grab uh, some like guitars and stuff like that. No, I don't think all the deposits are gone. I think some percentage of them are gone. Uh, he'll, you can be, uh, You can be charged in the U.S. for international crime. Stay at the vanguard. Is this a bug? Okay, good. <laughs> Campus research grants. This shit's like real life. Uh, what happens in the time before being charged? A lot of anxiety. I don't know if that uh, was real, the Donald. I don't think that video or audio was real. Are we invading? Rooks. Save this game? Should I just quit? Fuck. Fuck it. Vein isn't good until level 6, right? Can we die Vein? Not die, but focus. I don't know if 
if they've changed what's been changed or what hasn't been changed in these crazy matchups. Yeah, I'm so chunked right now. Oh, Heimer kind of makes it hard to eat a poke. God damn it. Squishy Bane, let's go. Here comes LeBlanc with the plays. Plays incoming. The plays are real. Switch your bad stuff. <laughs> don't, don't BM our team. Munjaro! The biggest drug ever. Holy chunk. Oh man, lost half my health just. No ward. Is that my job? Those Heimer audios from like 10 years ago. You can tell it's low quality. Kanye West. Uh, Kanye's, um... I don't know. I don't know what to say about Kanye. Yay. I love his music. I'll say that. That up last hit. Nice. 
even paying attention to this game. Oh shit! I'm fine. Mr. West. Sorry if that was loud. This guy's. Can I dress up as what? The Shrek? This idiot, why are you going back? Where are you going? Oh, you wanted an empiric? The sun always rises. What was that? Yeah, I need Elon Musk to unban me. Come on, dude. Trading competition's over, I won.
Who's feeding? Poker tournament, that'd be fun. The sun always rises. <laughs> no, Boomer, good question. Um, not really. Maybe it's really small amount. Which went mid. And we voted for surrender. Where'd he go? Okay. Oh, it's all time. Go in, what the fuck? Fucking Dr. Mundo, what are you doing? Guy's farming in the team fight that he's right next to. Look at this guy.
47 health. Your boy did it. That's called the bait, the master bait. Wait a second. When should you buy Ethereum? Uh, I don't think you have to buy uh, Ethereum. Get Master. Get Pull. Bill Maher mentioned me, I heard. No, I can't find the hackers in my crypto. I'm hoping law enforcement will, though. I talked to uh, the FBI. Initiation, bad everything.
You have to learn how to focus when you read. Tips on moving to New York City? I don't know. Hiring a moving company?
Uh, how do you stay inspired? Um, it's a tough question. Oh shit! Somebody killed me. Fuck. Oh shit. Broke into our base. Hmm. No. Who the hell are you? Why are you in my base? Oh! Excuse me, this is my house. What are you doing in my house? How did you get in? There's a lock on the door. What the fuck, you broke the door? Excuse me. Excuse me, this is my house. Excuse me. I took over your house. Why? But th this is where I live. Where am I supposed to live? Who is wizard? Open up. You can you can come over for tea. I'm calling the police. Watch out, watch out. Get away from the door. This is Pharma Bro, Martin Shkreli. How could you do this? Where stay are you here, going? stay here, okay? Where are you going? Stay here. What do you mean, stay here? Locked in. That was me. Took, took all my stuff. He took all my stuff. What the fuck? How could you? I'm gonna find your base and break into your base. How about that? You're still taking my stuff as we speak? Are you fucking crazy? What a jerk. What a jerk you are. You're trying to rob, you're robbing me blind. Unbelievable. Fucking home intruder. Look at you. Here's the deal, okay? Yeah. Are Can you like me? This is- I'm not the for you. This is like when Nancy Pelosi's husband got yeah, got robbed. Wait, what are you saying? Do you know who you're talking to right now? 
What? Where were you going? Who am I talking to right now? Martin Shkreli. Pharma bro. Who is that? Look me up. A famous business person. Entrepreneur. Wait, 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 wait. I'm streaming, Hold right? Hold on. The and, blueprint kid? And I'm streaming. The blueprint guy? Who? The, the guy from Blueprint's video? I don't know who that is, but I, I, I am somebody very important, and you have broken into my house, my virtual metaverse house, and you took all my stuff, and hey, don't shoot my body, and this is not fair, and uh, I don't know. This is just talking to me. What are you claiming? You ruined my whole home. Martin's truly really feel really bad, man. Yeah, you should. Mm -hmm. you, you, you trash the place too. You are are you a younger person? Yeah, at least I didn't drink your water. Right? Uh, I guess it could be worse. You're eating my food. <laughs> How do you clap? You. See? Get out! <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Are you in high school or college or...? Hey, where are you going? You stay in there, Mr. Burn. I have a key. My stuff is gone. What is this shit? It's locked. How do I? I can't. Did anyone catch his name? <sighs> Martin. Hey. Are you still robbing me? Do you, do you have a base no. nearby? I don't know. I can hire a hundred. Okay. I'm gonna hire a hundred people to raid your base. And you change my. E oh, oh, there we go. Ah. Nice. Oh, sweet. Clear oh, TC. Get you doing lock song. Look at this guy. What a scumbag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good, yeah. Smart. Um, I make a mistake by doing this? You're making me mad now. You are worthless. You, you can have a problem, Smart. You can do nothing to me. I... Oh, stop injecting me like you're Hunter Biden. Smoke a little crack. Oh wow, he shot me. Might as well report him. Where am I even? Very far away. Oh, back to hitting the rock in the tree.
Jupiter rock, yeah. All right, how are we doing? Get that rock good. Oh yeah, let's get out of this. I never hit the crack rock. makes a spear or something. Inspired. Wish I had a better answer for you. Dopamine fasting? Interest in controlling a stable coin? Sure. Sounds great. It's one o'clock, uh, probably gonna go to bed. My base is gone. Good morning. Is crypto going to go down more? Probably, yeah. Uh... Yeah, it is a Praxis hoodie. What do you know about that? It's a prank. Yeah, Crypto City, exactly. Is this my, was this my base now? My base hopefully is still intact. Bitcoin futures, not that liquid compared to spot. Looks like my base is still okay. Crazy. Yeah, a little insurrection here and there. Petroleum engineering sounds like a good degree.
I am starting to get into physics. I was into physics when I was in high school. But it's a long story. I like particle physics, some atomic physics. But I never learned like mechanical engineering or solid state physics or even like kinematics and stuff like that. Of course, I have to know a little bit of quantum physics. 134 references, no big deal. All right, guys, I'm going to go to sleep. See y'all later. Adios, amigos. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate you joining me tonight. Have a good night.